Today, scientists are analyzing material from America's most intriguing archaeological site, the Windover Bog in Florida. This rare material holds vital clues to the origins of Native North Americans, and the scientists are on the brink of an incredible discovery. Yet the story of the unearthing of the Windover site itself is just as remarkable as anything they found buried within it. Cape Canaveral, southern Florida, 220 square miles of undisturbed marshland on the outskirts of the shuttle launch site. In January 1982, this landscape was to change forever. The remote district of Windover would be the site of 50 luxury homes. To prepare the road leading to the Windover housing project, construction worker Steve Vanderjack needed to clear a path through a marshy area known as the Windover Bog. Before long, something unusual caught his eye. It looked like a rock. The first one that came out, when I threw it off to the side to dump it out, I saw it roll off from the pile a little bit, and I found it a little strange, because you don't see a lot of rocks and stones here coming out. So I jumped off to take a look to see what it was that I did pick up out of there. And as I turned it around, it was looking at me. And that's, that's when we stopped. In the bucket of his backhoe, Steve Vanderjack had found human remains, a skull. Vanderjack thought he'd stumbled upon evidence of murder. Maybe some foul play, maybe an accident, maybe somebody stumbled off in there, or you don't know. News of the discovery traveled fast, and chief developer Jim Swan rushed to the site. Well, there's a, a flurry of excitement. They called me down, and I went down, and, and they had a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, with this uh, skull looking up at me uh, that they had recovered out here on the, on the site. I'm no expert in that stuff, but it was so beautiful and old. The tannin had gone into the skull, and it was a gorgeous color of shiny brown, so I didn't think it was anything new about it. Jim Swan's instincts told him this was no modern burial and could be of enormous archaeological significance. Where there was one skull, there could be many. Jim Swan suspected they were onto something big. He summoned the help of anthropologist Glenn Doran, then a young assistant professor at Florida State University, and an expert on human bog remains. Within weeks of the remarkable discovery of the skull, Glenn Doran arrived in Windover to examine the bog. He was intrigued by what he saw. There was a relatively small, little nasty water black pond. And at first glance, it didn't look like a particularly inviting place for an archaeological site. But then we got out and we started walking up and down and looking at the, the piles of peat. And within just a few minutes, we started seeing clusters of human skeletal material. Immediately, Glenn Doran found clues to the age of the site in the skull's recently exposed teeth. Modern teeth are smooth and intact, ancient ones worn down. The dramatic wear on these teeth told Glenn Doran the Windover site was older than anyone imagined. You could look at the teeth and instantly see that, no, this was not a crime scene, this was not a forensic case. It was clearly somebody who had lived, you know, thousands of years ago. Most human remains found in Florida are less than 500 years old. Glenn Doran's big challenge was to study the bog's hidden clues to figure out exactly how much older the Windover bones could be. There were a couple of things that were immediately obvious and interesting. One is the skeletal material was extremely well preserved. Secondly, when you looked in the peat itself, you didn't see any, any ceramic material. And ceramics to us are an indication of materials of the last, say, 4,000 years. But the fact that there wasn't any ceramic material in there was really the first hint that this material could be quite old. Glenn Doran suspected the remains could date as far back as 1,500 BC to around the same time as King Tutankhamun in Egypt. But to be certain, he needed to send a sample of Windover bone to be radiocarbon dated. So we took some of the bone samples, sent them off to the lab, and then it was a, a waiting game. And then finally, we got the word back that the materials were over 7,000 years old. I mean, you, we were really walking on clouds. I mean, it just unbelievable. It exceeded our, our expectation. 
we knew we had this just incredible once in a lifetime opportunity. Glenn Doran had stumbled on the exceptionally rare remains of ancient Americans, so rare that the five skulls and three bones he'd found were already the largest human collection of this age in America. It really gives us the most vivid picture of prehistoric life you can possibly imagine. It gives us more information to get really right down to the nitty gritty of everyday life, of health, of sickness, the human tragedy of injury and disease. What was it really like to be alive in Florida seven plus thousand years ago? The Windover bones belong to people who lived over 3,000 years before the first pyramids were built in Egypt, and almost 6,000 years before the birth of Christ. They were some of the very first people to set foot in the Americas. But to find out if there were more bones buried deep beneath the bog, Glenn Doran was faced with a monumental problem. He would have to drain the bog dry, and that meant pumping out millions of gallons of water. The plan is to put a well point system in, pump it out, and then start in this area of the pond itself. In 1984, after two solid years of planning and fundraising, 130 wells were sunk deep into the peat pumping out 1,000 gallons of water a minute around the clock. As the Windover Marsh drained, Glenn Doran was confronted by a unique and breathtaking sight. This wasn't a scattering of bodies, but a cemetery. Doran's lucky find had turned into an archeological treasure trove. Sealed in this extraordinary peaty grave lay the remains of hundreds of men, women, and children of all ages. Glenn Doran could also make out bone and antler tools and delicately carved wooden objects that had survived for over 7,000 years. What could be learned from Windover was tantalizing. It was everything Doran had hoped for and more. Sealed in an airtight cocoon of peat, the fungi and bacteria that caused decay were shut out. What's more, the Windover peat itself was special not acidic like most peat, but neutral and perfect for the conservation of bones. It's virtually an optimal environment. You couldn't ask for a better preservation medium. 